the most common interview question, aka backstab mechanics. Now, if we want to be honest, the most common interview question is probably FizzBuzz. This is a question that you're probably going to get in some web developer interview, okay? And, and that's because the truth is, look, coding isn't that hard. This FizzBuzz question, it's really easy. Um, there's a reason why people can go to six month booth booth six month bloody hell six month boot camps and leave with these six figure jobs at companies like YouTube copying whatever UI Pornhub comes up with right it's not that difficult however you know if you're going to be trying to get a job like a gameplay engineering job which is going to be a lot more of a test on your fundamental math skills particularly 3D maths. Um, you just can't expect a question this easy to come up on the interview. The most common question that you're likely to occur, and this is one I've gotten on every single interview I've ever done as a game plan engineer, is quite simply, what is the dot product? However, it's unlikely they're going to ask you a question as direct as that, okay? It's rare that they say something like, what is a doorknob? Instead, they'll ask you a question like, how would you open a door? And then if you answer anything other than, I'd use the doorknob, then they know, you know, if you say, oh, I'd bash my head against it, then they know you're an idiot, or at the very least, a creative problem solver. And so similarly, these dot product questions come in a variety of flavors where basically the answer is always the dot product. And so the most common one is going to be this backstab mechanic. Here's a very violent scene from uh, Dark Souls, the, the first one, I believe, um, where if you do a backstab, particularly if you stab them in the back, uh, it's going to be a lot more damage than if you stab them from the front. Uh, similar, I mean, this is an all uh, t tons of games. Here's another very violent scene from uh, looks like Halo Reach here, um, where basically if you punch them from the back, it's going to be like an instant kill kind of thing. Okay, this is very common in video games. Assassin's Creed as well. We'll look at an example from that later. And the question is often posed with this, you know, method, a uh, signature prototype, something like. Hey, you want to determine if a player can backstab. You've got two parameters here, which is the player and the enemy, and we just need you to return a Boolean. Can they backstab? Okay, and with this signature, you should be able to solve the problem. So this is the point um, where basically you don't necessarily want to start um, coding yet. You just want to make sure you understand it before you go into jumping in a solution. So for example, you might say something like, uh, De defining what a backstab is and so a rudimentary definition might be something like an attack where you could see them but they can't see you so this is something that you would say to the interviewer and you'd get them to confirm that yes this is what I'm talking about and then you'd also want to maybe just start talking about some edge cases very early on in the conversation just so that they understand kind of that you're anticipating some of these problems it's better for you to say oh you know there's probably gonna be an issue here but I'm gonna go forward with the solution uh, rather than you going forward with the solution and saying, oh, here's something I didn't expect. Um, you know, they want to see you forward thinking in that, uh, in that regard. So you might want to be considering, okay, well, how far away can they be? Uh, what exactly is the FOV range? Is it a 90 degree radius? Is it 30 degrees? Uh, these are some of the considerations you want to ask the interviewer. Just kind of jot these down as constants or considerations, whatever it may be. And uh, from there, uh, just so that we have the problem very understood, basically, you're gonna have two people in a three-dimensional space, and that's something we come to understand. And uh, you know they, they have coordinates, right? So they might have transforms attached to them, which might give you information like their position and their forward vector. That's probably all you can expect to get from a transform, really. Um, oh, maybe rotation also, but uh, that's not gonna be relevant for us today. Uh, so if we can imagine there's one player down here in the bottom, he's gonna have, or she's gonna have, or they're gonna have, or it's gonna have a forward transform coming out of their belly button here that's gonna extend you know, into the grid. And then we can imagine a 30 degree radius on either side of that forward transform, which would be the threshold of can see, right? So if basically if anything's inside this 30 degree radius, which it looks like the enemy is going to be, then we would say, yes, the enemy uh, can be seen by the player. Okay, so something like that. Okay, great. So I think that is a full enough explanation of the problem. This is the point where John Quinones joins us and we ask, what would you do given that you have these two transforms, one for the player, one for the enemy? You, the challenge is, can you implement even if it's just on paper to describe the approach it, it is really helpful for your own learning if you do try to do it on your own at home um, try to figure out how you would determine if you can backstab given this information okay so take a moment to do that pause the video and now we're back okay so here's my plan basically my plan is to obtain PE which would be the vector extending from the player to the enemy so that would be in this case the the green vector here and then we basically want to check whether or not PE is greater than uh, 30 degrees away from P forward. 
So P forward would be this blue vector here. This is the forward vector coming out of the P, the, the player. Um, and basically, if it is beyond the 30 degree fresh threshold, we know that the player cannot see the enemy. Whereas, um, if it's within that region, we know that it can be seen. Likewise, we want to do the opposite approach, which is then we're going to obtain EP, which is, of course, the, the same vector going in the opposite direction. And we're basically going to be checking whether or not EP is within a third degree threshold, bloody hell, of E forward. And that's uh, this other blue vector over here. Sorry, they're both blue. Bear with me here. And then we're going to have some other edge cases, which is uh, stuff like distance and, and other considerations for us to take consideration of. But basically, that's the plan. Okay, cool. So if we were to, again, bring this open into the uh, method signature, we have our plan here. Let's proceed. Um, so it would be really useful, sorry, it would be really useful if we had a method called is in FOV. And so what I've noticed here is that I'm obtaining the PE and then I'm checking if the PE is within a range of the P forward. And then I'm doing the same thing again, which is I'm obtaining the EP and then essentially I'm checking if the EP is within a threshold of E forward. So what I've done here is I've created a sort of helper method, which is going to uh, encapsulate that logic, which is happening twice. That way we don't have r repeat code anywhere. Okay, and you could have repeat code somewhere. It's kind of overblown, frankly, but um, I think it makes sense to make a helper method in this case. So what that helper method would look like is something like is in FOV, where we would take the forward vector. In that case, that would be P forward. And then we would take whatever the vector is representing the current line of sight. So for example, that would be PE, or in the second case, that would be EP. If you, you want a geometric example, that would be um, is in forward vector is in FOV. We would take a forward, which would be the the blue vector here, and then the second parameter would be the green vector. And so basically, this helper method would check whether or not it's in range. And we'll define that in just a moment. But the reason why this helper method is helpful, <laughs> of course, you know, besides the name, is once you define it, the can backstab method becomes very easy. All we have to do at that point is check if the player sees, which would be to check whether or not the PE is within the range of the P forward. Then we would check if the enemy sees, which similarly is if the P is if the EP is in the range of the E forward. Then we'd have to check, you know, some additional edge cases. And finally, we could simply return whether or not the player sees and the enemy does not see. And so that would be sufficient to check if someone can backstab. Okay, so all that would lead is for all that leaves us is to complete this method is in FOV. And again, we have the forward and the line of sight, which in this case are blue and green respectively. And basically, we want to get the angle between those two vectors. If we can get that angle, we could check whether or not it's greater than a certain threshold, which in this case could be something like 30 degrees. Now, wouldn't it be convenient to have a method that does that? And that's exactly what the dot product does. It gets us the angle. So this is a um, screenshot taken directly from the super duper study sheet. The super duper study sheet is a guide I wrote that will basically go through every question you could possibly face on a gameplay engineering coding interview. Uh, maybe not every question, but it covers definitely uh, the most common ones. And so most of this we're not going to need. I'm just going to highlight a certain section here, which is that, uh, well, first let's read the definition. Okay, for folks who aren't familiar with the dot product, the dot product is the product of two vector magnitudes. Remember, vector magnitude is, is how long it is, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. Okay, so basically it finds the angle between, and then as a little mnemonic for me, I like to remember that the C in cosine kind of looks like a dot. Okay, so the C kind of looks like a dot. That's why you use the cosine for the dot product. Very important to remember because I made this mistake once and it was quite embarrassing where I thought the because the, the, the dot product has a sister algorithm, which maybe we'll talk about in a future video, called the cross product. And the cross product does not use the cosine. It's the sine for the cross product. And so I like to say the, the C and the cosine kind of looks like a dot for the dot product. The S kind of looks like two curves that are crossing each other. That kind of forms an S. And so that's why you use the sine for the cross product and the dot for the cosine. Okay, so that, that's, that's my mnemonic there for you. Um, but basically, if we use this dot product, we can get essentially the angle between the green and blue. Okay, so here's a little formula for us here, which is the cosine of an angle is equal to, again, A dot B over the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Wonderful. So here's the code for that. We would basically get the, uh, the scalar we're going to have to divide by, which is just the magnitude of A plus the magnitude of B. Then we have the cosine of the angle, which is, again, the dot product of A and B scaled by the scalar. 
And then finally, once we want to get the angle, we, we don't want the cosine of the angle. Remember, we're going to have to pull it out of this cosine argument. And to do that, we have the, the inverse of the cosine, which is the arc cosine, or a cos, is commonly referred to in a lot of math libraries. And so then we have the angle, and then we can simply compare that to some you know global threshold or maybe a threshold we pass in, whatever it is. Um, that will give us the Boolean we need to check if it's in the FOV. Done. Awesome. So now we have all the code written, is an FOV, can backstab, and now you're going to want to add in the edge case consideration. So there's a lot of edge cases to think about here, stuff we can add to the algorithm. I'm not going to go uh, through each one of these in detail, but just some things that you should definitely mention to your interviewer as you're going through the, the question is stuff like distance. So, hey, if I'm facing the enemy, but the enemy's on the other side of the room, regardless of if he's looking at me, I'm not going to be able to backstab that guy. He's just too far away. So that's something you want to consider. Again, you could probably use the vector magnitudes there uh, with the line of sight vector magnitudes in order to figure that out. The other thing is boundaries. So, hey, if I am facing a player and I'm directly behind him in theory, right, but the player is on the other side of a wall, then I shouldn't be able to backstab him through the wall. So you're probably going to need to address that somehow, probably a ray cast. Um, so you're going to want to talk about that. The other thing is heights. So this is a little bit harder to explain, but let's say I'm really close to the enemy, but I'm <laughs> I'm on the second floor, right? Let's uh, you can imagine a building that is pretty short, where the floors aren't that tall, where basically I'm on one floor and the enemy is on the second floor, um, and though I'm behind the enemy, I'm also below him in such a way that I shouldn't be able to backstab him through the floor. So you're gonna want to keep that into consideration. Again, I, I think the ray cast would probably suffice. And then there's other special cases, right? So, for example, this, there's this game called Assassin's Creed, which is very fond of having the character, like, jump from these ridiculous heights and backstab the guys from, from way down below, right? But you don't want to have that ability um, if the, the enemy's really, really high and the player's really low, right? You only want to be able to jump down to do the backstab. You don't want to be able to fly up and do the backstab. So, so, so these are some other considerations, right? You're going to have to think about all these edge cases. Okay, cool. So, as always... Um, this is just one of many questions which I address again in that guide, so feel free to reference that. But if you are preparing for an interview, these are some review questions you're going to want to have down pat, right? None of these questions should give you the heebie-jeebies. Uh, so just, I would say, pause the video, read through them, make sure you feel comfortable with these questions. If you don't, refer to that guide in the description. It's free. It's a resource. And if you have questions, just drop them in the comment section. I'd be happy to help you out. Make another video if needed in order to make sure you pass that interview because we need more awesome game plan engineers and we're going to make that happen. So if this video helped you out, like the video, please. That helps a ton. And subscribe for more content similar to this one. Again, links in the description of this video. Uh, my name is Matthew Ventures. I'm very happy that you're here to visit me and have a great day. Good luck.